So I'm Moana Mackey, um, I live here in Gisborne, I'm the Labour Party candidate for the East Coast electorate. Um, I want to start by saying, I think if the 1990s were remembered for anything, it was deregulation. And if the noughties are going to be remembered for everything, it's going to be cleaning up all the mess of the deregulation in the 1990s. Whether it be this kind of stuff here with the coastal shipping, whether it be leaky buildings. Um, the fact is, I think we're now seeing the value of having protections in place before we go ahead with activities that are potentially risky. It might cost a little bit more money sometimes, and in some instances it might mean that there are some oil <coughs> companies that don't want to come here because the costs of drilling in New Zealand are too high. But I think we've been, we've had our heads in the sand a little bit about our water quality in general, I think, and it's a bit like that frog in boiling water. If you do it slowly, the frog doesn't notice. You know, we've got a lot of really polluted rivers in New Zealand that are pouring out into the sea, and they are affecting the quality of our marine environment. And it's been happening for a long time. And I mean, I drive a car, I fly on a plane. Labour um, uh, gave permits for oil drilling as well. But I think what's good is when you can say, we've learned from what's happened, mm -hmm. and we're going to make changes. When the government changed, they did ramp up the oil and gas exploration. Um, they saw it as a much bigger part of the future of this country's economy than we did. Uh, they went out to the world and said, please, come in. And this is without any protections in our exclusive economic zone for the environment, as Garrett said. Beyond 12 miles out, there's nothing. There's a whole lot of laws about you know, shipping and, and who's in charge of what and fishing, but there's nothing to do with the environment. The RMA stops at that 12 mile zone. And Gareth mentioned a piece of legislation uh, that's, that's going through Parliament at the moment that is to put some protections in that zone. We voted against that legislation. Uh, it was a line call. I understand why the Greens voted for it. Uh, but we did not feel that we could support it because we just couldn't understand why you couldn't extend the protections and the tests under the RMA, which are well tested, which are well understood, out into the exclusive economic zone. That's what people already know. And it would, it, it would have an impact on a lot of these activities that people want to carry out, which is why they didn't do that, because the test would be too tough. But it's something that people know, so that's what we thought. Just extend that out beyond the exclusive economic zone, and then we'll have the same level of protection out in our deep sea that we do inshore. Um, and I urge you all to submit on that bill at Select Committee. Um, I've had a lot of people kind of be interested now that this has happened. So I think for the first time, we've seen what life might be like without our beaches, and what it might be like without a healthy, a healthy marine environment. And people have been really, really scared by that. It didn't take much. It didn't take much at all. And look at the chaos uh, that's happened. In fact, when you watch the Maritime New Zealand have this, this graphic display thing that they've worked out showing you where the oil will go if any more comes off the arena, if it, if it breaks up and if one of the tanks splits. And it pretty much bypasses all of the hoppe and down there, and it smacks into the east coast. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who get it big time, because the current's just carried up and around, and it's our beaches, and it's our people who rely on the marine environment for not just enjoyment, but for their food source, uh, and for many other things who are going to be the most impacted by it. And I was at a meeting in Whakatane that Maritime New Zealand held, where the Minister Nick Smith came along. And the government, are, are, are very, very desperate to not link what's happening to the arena to the proposals for drilling off the east coast. And we got to the end of the meeting, and no one had mentioned it, and I tell you what, Nick does a really good job of calming people down. Anytime anyone raised any questions or was angry about something, he'd just say, you know, hey, no, we've just got to deal with this now. So let me deal with the emergency first, and then we'll deal with that later. And people would actually feel guilty for kind of raising concern. But at the end of it, a woman got up and she said, why? Have you said nothing about the drilling off the East Coast? Why would you do that when you can't even cope with this? And that could be so much worse. And he got really angry with her. He got really angry with her. He told her that two, the two were completely separate, nothing to do with each other. They've been doing it in Taranaki for years and years and years and years and decades and never had a problem. And someone else yelled out, this is deep sea oil drilling in a seismically active part of the country. And anyway, it was kind of like meeting was over. And I actually think it is, because I thank the Environment Seven Everyone for setting this meeting up. This is not the first meeting we've had on this issue. And I think it's absolutely appalling that no one from the National Party has ever fronted up to these meetings, ever. It's, I mean, I know it's not easy, but I, I fronted up to meetings on Porsche and Seabed, and they weren't easy either. But when you're a representative, you front up for the good times and the bad times. And we haven't had anyone. In fact, Nick Smith was the first time anyone in this electorate had had the opportunity to ask any questions to government ministers and members of parliament who are making these decisions. Why are you doing them? And please answer these very simple questions that we have. 
around the seismic activity. When you look at GMS's um, it's geological and nuclear sciences, when you look at their map of where all the shallow earthquakes have happened in New Zealand over the last 10 years, there is a huge concentration right in the Rokumara Basin where they want to do this drilling. And when we had a meeting at the Lawson Field Theatre um, earlier this year, mm. we asked the simple question, does that make it more dangerous or less dangerous? Does seismic activity matter or doesn't it? And none of the representatives from the oil industry there answered that question, yeah. which I thought was very telling. I thought there was a simple answer, surely they would have given it to us. Um, but they didn't, which tells me that yes, it is far more dangerous. Yes. We asked questions about the, the endemic species that exist there, around the, the hooky breeding grounds. Will that activity, um, they said it won't kill them, okay, even if we, if we accepted that, and I'm not saying we do, will it interrupt their breeding patterns? Will it interrupt their feeding patterns? Are we going to create havoc for endemic species in that area again? And the Gisborne District uh, Council actually did a study on it that showed how valuable that part of our marine environment is um, in terms of the breeding of fish stocks right around the east coast. And locals up there have been wanting to put that in a marine reserve. So I can only imagine uh, their complete shock when they heard on the news that they weren't going to get a marine reserve, they were going to get oil and gas exploration instead. So the process was dreadful from the start. It is unacceptable that people heard about it on the news and then had no ability to, to do anything about it going ahead. Questions haven't been answered and you have to wonder what it's going to take for us to learn. We had the Gulf of Mexico. That was a wake-up call for my party, I can tell you that. Absolutely. And we looked and thought, could we deal with The richest country in the world couldn't deal with that. That's right. So how are we going to be able to do it? And when we looked at actually what was in place to deal with it, we can't. Mm -hmm. And look at a series of disasters that have happened in New Zealand, from the mm -hmm. earthquake to Pike River mm -hmm. to this. We keep having to bring in experts from overseas because we don't have people here who can, on day one, get out there and lead the recovery operation. We're constantly bringing people in from Australia to do it. We don't have the equipment here in New Zealand to do a lot of the salvage work. And that begs the question, why would we then go ahead with this if we don't have the ability, one, to deal with a disaster, mm -hmm. two, if we're not clear where the liability lies to pay for any <coughs> clean up, and three, we're not certain that the environmental protections are in place. And so what we've said, we haven't actually released our energy policy yet, but this part of it we have talked about because it's so important, is that unless those criteria are met, we would not allow permits to go ahead for deep sea drilling, which is not saying we'll never let them go ahead for deep sea drilling, but we would want to know that we're able to deal with any disaster, that the equipment is here and the company can provide it and bring it to New Zealand so it's sitting there in case anything happens, so the experts are here in New Zealand. Number two, that they will pay the full cost of the cleanup, the full cost of the cleanup if they're going to come here and carry out this activity. If that means that they no longer want to come here, K to five that's fine, then they don't, because those are our bottom lines. And you know, this has been, I've been going to Parliament every week, as has Parakura, and we talk about this at caucus, we make sure people know what's been happening on the East Coast, we've lobbied our spokespeople very hard. I come from a party that was founded in the mining community on the West Coast. A lot of our members work in the oil and gas industry. Our policy is written by our party, and we have members in our party who work in that very industry, and that's what their livelihood is. But, as a party, we've recognised that our environment is the most important thing we have, and without it we don't have anything else. Um, peak oil has come. We need to be looking at other forms of, of energy. But this has been the biggest wake-up call of all, because if we cannot cope with the arena, then how would we cope with a disaster that could absolutely destroy our marine environment on the east coast? Mm. And so we've set those criteria are there. If you can't meet them, then we would not allow the permits to go ahead. Um, I'm really pleased we've got to that point. It's you know, that's what you do as a local representative. I can't speak for other communities. I don't know how other communities feel about deep sea drilling around the country. Some of them might think it's a good economic benefit for them. They might want it to go ahead, and I wouldn't ever pretend to speak for them. But as a local representative, all you can do <coughs> is go down to Wellington and make sure that the needs of this community are heard loud and clear, and they have been. Um, 